Okay, all right, so we've been working on this thing for three days. It's not anywhere near done. But this hopefully will be the last day that we work on this. We'll get it all sorted. Okay, so upgrading the graphics on one of these iMacs isn't, you know, a plug-and-play experience like you would with a normal PC. There are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind, some of which I've talked about before, but I figured we'll kind of just go through them all again so that everyone is on the same page. So I'm going to interrupt here to speed this along and also apologize for the audio quality in these shots. I'm using the same microphone to record this voiceover as was used in that clip. So you can tell the, the acoustics in that room are awful. So I apologize for that. I know it's not very good, but you know, there's not much that I can really do at this point. So basically what I'm explaining here is that in order to um, upgrade your graphics to a non-Apple graphics card, you're going to lose your boot screen and your boot switcher. So make sure that you have a program. We downloaded one called Boot Champ that allows you to switch from Mac OS to Windows. And then with Mac OS as the default drive, you just restart back into Mac OS. And that way you avoid having a boot switcher. More specifically with this graphics card, which is a GTX 980. You, you wanted to hand it to me, but I just I wanted. It to, I'm just standing here. Okay, here. here. I wanted some. Right, here. Ready? Okay. Ready? Go again. So with these graphics, wow, beautiful. You're welcome. The GTX 980M. We have a couple of other things to keep in mind. So number one is that they don't necessarily work out of the box on every version of Mac OS because, of course, it can't be that simple. You're trying to change. It, this goes against Papa Cook. Papa Tim Cook, he doesn't want us to do this, so of course they got to make it difficult. Wasn't it Steve Jobs? Well, I guess this was a 2011, so yeah, Papa Steve. Although the Mac OS versions are later, though, so I'm going to say Papa Tim, All right, fair okay? Enough, fair enough. So Papa Tim doesn't want us to use these graphics. Essentially, we are running Mac OS El Capitan on this machine because if you are using Sierra or High Sierra, you need to modify the Apple graphics control text to force macOS to work with an unsupported graphics card. So we don't particularly feel like doing this right now, so we're just sticking to El Capitan where you don't actually have to do that. There's, this is literally, there's no way for it to not be on my face. Yeah, well, if you just duck down. This looks so dumb. <laughs> we're all hunched over like a bunch of old men here. Now, as far as what you need to do before you do this upgrade, it, it, it varies based on where you look. So some places tell you to install NVIDIA web drivers before you do anything. Some, some places say that all you have to do is put it in, boot into safe mode by holding shift, and then install the web drivers. Honestly, it could go either way. Some of those, I think the, the site that said that you had to install the graphics the NVIDIA web drivers first was using Sierra, so maybe it doesn't have to happen for El Capitan. So basically what I think we should do is install the web drivers first okay. and boot it to safe mode just to make sure. You know, you can't be too cautious. But again, there's a fair amount of just kind of trying stuff to see what works that goes on here because it's not an exact science. It's not anything that's official. We're all basing our, we're basing everything that we're doing off of what we found on community forums, pretty much. Now on the other hand, in Windows it should be pretty easy to get this thing going because first of all, Windows 10 detects drivers, so it'll probably just find it, and then if not, we'll just download GeForce Experience, so that should be pretty easy. But you also want to make sure that your default boot is set to boot into Mac OS when you do these upgrades so that you can set it in Mac OS first. So as you can probably tell from the title of this video, things didn't go exactly as we had planned in this beginning sequence here. So what follows is a sort of step-by-step -step of everything that we did and what problems developed. And at the end, I'll give you guys a little bit of what I think the problem is and how we're going to resolve it, hopefully, in the next video. So stick around, and I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. Okay, well, that was incredibly nerve-wracking. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be comments like, oh, you didn't do it correct. I don't care, okay? We got it out. <laughs> oh, I don't understand, Tim or, or Steve. Why not just have the screw on this side? Why is it on this side where you have to pull everything out? It's stupid. But we got it out, which is nice. This bracket stays. I don't particularly feel like taking it out. There's no reason to. So here is what our little graphics assembly looks like. Okay, so that looks... Pretty standard. I do have to say, as crappy as this card is, 
the matte black PCB is on point. Mm. That's like the best part of any Apple product. So we now have the default graphics separated. We're gonna clean all of this off. You can see this is why we need those thermal pads. It actually has the same VRAM configuration on here. So we'll just basically put thermal pads along there and do some thermal paste, which actually, speaking of thermal paste, look how bad that is. You can entirely see the outline of Noah's head in the reflection on the actual die. That's never a good thing. That's a, that's a really poor thermal paste job. No wonder these things overheat and die all the Plus, time. Plus you can see my head, so like that, I'm sorry. <laughs> thermal compound, I don't even want to call it thermal pads because this is absolute garbage. You can see it's not even slightly sticky. It's just this super thin, rubbery crap. It's absolute garbage. So we're gonna go to Micro Center and we're gonna buy some actual thermal pads, not this crappy stuff. BRB. Ah! Okay, so after much toiling away, we have the GTX 980M inserted into our computer, which is reassembled except for the SSD. So, we are in pretty good shape as far as compatibility. A couple of things to note, the bracket on the back, this is the one that came with the GTX 980M. Um, it does not have the proper screw holes that we needed. So obviously this may depend on what you get. You might get lucky, sometimes they change. So the one that was originally on the graphics that came with it, which had a slightly larger square, as you saw earlier, was ever so slightly too big due to the little rubber footing on the bottom for, and it, it, it kind of wouldn't lay flush. So what I did to solve that was I just sort of filed down the edge of it. So you're not increasing, or you're not decreasing the structural rigidity of that little bracket, but it allowed it to fit on, screw into the heatsink, and then the heatsink just fits in like a normal thing would because it's a standard card, so it didn't have any issues. And then we were able to reassemble that, put the board back in, plug everything in, screw the board in, and now we should be good as far as the graphic situation goes. Well, there's still a lot of stuff to work out, but the graphics are in, it's reassembled, so I guess we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna try safe mode. It's plugged in. I'm pressing the power button. Please work. I'm real. I'm so nervous. My heart is pounding right now. The mouse went off again. Uh oh. It's back on. Oh. And it's off. We broke the gaming iMac it's on. in 2018. It's off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you reckon? Well, <laughs> same. This is so awful. Don't do this. Don't don't do this. If you have an iMac. Don't do what we've done. It's not worth it. Why? <laughs> Why won't you work? Uh... All right, so it's been a couple days, but we're we're coming back. We've got we've we've kind of settled down, taken a deep breath. Yes. We're working on the iMac again. So, let me talk you through what we've done here. So, we've put the original card back in place. And we've actually pulled out the Exerve because it has an MXM slot. So basically what we're trying to do is isolate the issue as to why it wasn't turning on. So we reckon that it's the uh, 980's fault. Mm -hmm. Whether that be compatibility or that the card is faulty, we don't know. But we think that that is what's causing the issue in this case. So we put the old card back in, which by the way, we have to say, it's actually getting a lot easier to work on this thing now that we've yeah. taken it apart so many times. I mean, we, we, we did all this testing and like took it out, took the board out, all that stuff in like 15 minutes yeah. of, of combined time. So it's getting a lot easier to work on for us. So 
The next thing that you gotta know, and this is something that will probably be useful um, if you plan on working on these, is we have these four diagnostic LEDs here. So the one on the far left is um, basically acknowledging that we have a power source coming in from the power supply. So it is plugged in, as you can see, so that's good. We've got that one. Now, when we had the 980, we had that light as well. So the next one, uh, power LED 2, is the power on. So when you push the power button, that LED will illuminate when to say the computer's turned on. And then the third one is graphics. So when it recognizes the graphics. Now, the fourth LED is not going to light up because that's you know saying that the display is connected. So... Obviously, that's only going to light up when the display is connected, and therefore you can't see the LED, so it's kind of stupid. But um, we at least have some way of knowing what's going to happen. So when we had the 980 in there, you push the power button, and nothing happens. This is the only light. So go ahead and press the power button, Noah, and we'll take a look at what happens. Here it is. Power LED 2 comes on, and we get graphics and the chime, and we are fired up. So... With the default graphics in here, you can see it's working very nicely. Still nothing with the 980. Now, one of the theories that I do have is there are, because again, it's really hard to find information on all of this, but from a couple of the sources that I saw online, certain MXM cards have issues with Mac OS. The ones that seemed to work best um, are ones, here you can just shut that down. The ones that seem to work best in iMacs are ones that were pulled out of Dell, like Alienware's or Clevo computers. Um, I can't remember any more than that. It's, again, that stuff is really vague. So, again, I have no idea where this card came from. It, there's a very good chance that it didn't come from a computer that was just manufactured and put in here, so that may be why we're having this issue. What we'll do now is we're going to, we've installed web drivers on the Xserve and we're going to put the 980 in the MXM slot in the Xserve. Not for very long, mind you, because we don't have a heatsink on it. Um, but it's not, it's not too big a worry because we're not using that card. We're still booting off of the normal card, so it's just kind of populating the slot. It doesn't get too warm, so I'm not too worried about it overheating. And then once we're in, in system information, we can test to see if the card is being recognized. And hopefully that'll confirm or deny whether or not this card is faulty or if it's a compatibility thing. All right, so to finish off this video, because we didn't film any more as we were going, here I am editing the video. So uh, let me just explain what happened. We put the MXM card in the Xserve, we fired it up, we looked in system information, sure enough, GTX 980M shows up, shut the machine down, there we go. So the card is working. What we have on our hands is a compatibility issue. Now, there wasn't really any direct information on this, but from what I've gathered, the people who have successfully upgraded the graphics on their iMac have used Alienware cards. And that's because there is some, uh, it's called the vBIOS uh, basic firmware that is on these cards that are in Alienware computers that work in the iMacs. And Certain cards from other manufacturers or this one that I just bought from, you know, I just purchased it uh, brand new and they just don't like to work. So I can confirm that just a brand new card with nothing on it will not work in your iMac. So buy a card that has been pulled from an Alienware machine. I'm not sure about Clevo because, um, you know, they're different MSI as well. Some listings on eBay will tell you that it'll work in an MSI, Clevo, or an Alienware. So again, it's and that's really hard for me to test because I'd have to buy like a bunch of different cards. But from what I have gathered, your best bet is to buy a card that was pulled out of an Alienware laptop. And so that's what I did. And in the next video, we're gonna install that and see if that works. So. This has been a real treat of a project. I'm gonna sell the 980M that you saw in this video, and we're gonna try and use the new one. So I'll see you guys in that video, and as usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.